You know, this is kind of a new thing where we make videos talking about trade rumors proposed by other markets revolving around Vancouver-related players. It doesn't normally happen unless you're talking about JT Miller, that in which didn't end up happening, but this is a little bit of a different situation from Miller. This is not a guy who was on pace for 99 points. This is not a guy that was going to be on one more extra year of a cheap contract only to be extended for Vancouver. This is a Canucks captain. Let's talk today about what was said on Score North. This is the Minnesota sports radio-esque kind of YouTube channel. What they did was they had a video podcast pretty much the other day talking about their local Minnesota Wild and how the Wild should trade for Bo Horvat. Now, this video kind of went sort of not really viral per se. I mean, it's got 3,000 views, which I mean... A lot of my videos get 3,000 views, so that's kind of in the territory that I sort of feel is a pretty big deal. And so I wanted to talk about this because obviously Score North is a Minnesota-based podcast video production platform. And you had yourselves even this video posted onto the Minnesota Wild subreddit. You had a lot of comments on this video going over what the hosts say and just Minnesota Wild fans saying, okay, should we trade for Horvat? Spoiler alert, most of them say no. Why exactly is this the case, and why would the Vancouver Canucks be interested in something like this? Well, if you go over to Bo Horvat and you acknowledge what he is, Bo is a 27-year-old center. He's, oddly enough, it's kind of weird to think that he's 27, because I remember when the guy was drafted. It feels like yesterday. The guy was just 18 years old, and now he is technically in his prime. He's 6 feet, 260, and a left-handed guy sound till the end of this season, making $5.5 million a season, but that contract probably is going to go out there and extend itself in a pretty grand capacity. The reason for that is because Bo is on pace for 95 points this season. He's on pace for 68 goals. He's got 10 goals in 12 games and 14 total points on the year. He had 30 goals last year and 70 games played, and he has been an absolute goal-scoring machine. This was talked about on After Hours. This has been discussed on Twitter multiple times, but if you go back from a span in May up until now, Bo Horvat is legitimately the number one goal scorer. The guy finds the back of the net in more ways than one. He broke 30 last year for the first time, and honestly, I was kind of skeptical as to whether or not it would be a guarantee that he replicates that, but now he's got 70 games to get 20 goals, and that's looking a lot more realistic when you consider how much he's been scoring so far. Bo Horvat is on an expiring deal, though, and we've seen what the agent has had to say. He's saying that Bo is a first-line center, which I don't know if I agree with or disagree with. Pedersen and Miller are technically better, and I don't even know if you want to say that Miller is guaranteed like a center center, you know, because he's been playing on the wing recently. And then you have yourselves the comparable numbers thrown out there by guys like Elliot Friedman saying that Sean Couturier and his 7.7 could be the comparable number for Bo. That in which we have debated on the channel several times as to whether or not that's actually worth it, because if he gets paid 7.7 on his next deal, that means he'd be making more money than Pedersen and in the same territory as Hughes. Bo Horvat, unfortunately, in my mind, is not as important to the team as Quinn Hughes, but that's another conversation for another day. Let's talk about Minnesota and why this sort of trade would make sense for them, why it wouldn't, and what a lot of fans are saying. So, if you're coming from the perspective of acquiring a Bo Horvat like the folks over on Score Sports seem to be, you're really going out there and trying to make yourselves a playoff push today. It's said in the video by one of the hosts that Bo could be the number one center the Minnesota Wild had never had. And to that, I say, I don't necessarily know if I would put Bo Horvat in number one center territory. I mean, he's not the best defensively. He wins a lot of faceoffs, sure, and he scores goals a lot, which probably puts him in the conversation for being a number one center. But when you talk about JT Miller also getting 99 points last year, the thing with these players is, when I think about number one center, I think about guys that are legitimate game-changing superstars. I think about the Sebastian Ajos. I think about, of course, the McDavid's, the Matthews's, and the McKinnon's, but of course, not everybody's McDavid, Matthews, or McKinnon. Heck, I even think about Elias Pettersson. I think about guys that impact the game everywhere, that are able to score at consistent paces, and I don't know what it is, but Bo Horvat has only really become this sniper version of himself 
Since earlier in 2022, forgive me for not thinking that Bo Horvat over the span of his NHL career, which has spanned from 2015 up until today, is not necessarily a first-line center when the sample size that we have seen of him that is first-line center caliber has only really been here for the past eight months or so. Forgive me for not believing in Bo to be that first-line center just yet, but of course, if there's another team out there that thinks that his 98-point pace is sustainable and his 68-goal pace is sustainable and that this guy's gonna be that number one center, hey, you're free to believe whatever you want if it means the Vancouver Canucks are getting some more extra assets. Bo Horvat, should he be traded to the Wild, would... Be sort of a rental, sort of not. I mean, if there's a player going back the other way for Vancouver that does make significant cap space, cough, cough, Matt Dumba, maybe? I don't know. I don't necessarily think that I want Dumba too much, though. I know the guy's Filipino, and I love Filipino players because I myself am Filipino, but at the same time, I don't really know if Dumba is the answer for what Vancouver is needing. The Minnesota Wild right now have 11 points in 11 games played, they are 500, and they are a few points removed from the Central Division third spot in the playoffs. If you really wanted to go out there and push yourselves towards making the dance today, then okay, a guy like Bo Horvat helps you accomplish that in the short term, but when you think about the cap space, you think about the long term, you think about the cost that it would take to get this guy, one may start to question why would you even want to trade for a Bo Horvat? We said similar things about the Tyler Toffoli trade that Vancouver executed a few years ago with the LA Kings, but making a trade like this, where you get an expiring UFA, a guy who is in his prime today, sending away a few extra draft picks and prospects in the process, this is the kind of move that a cup contending team makes. This is the type of move that you'll see the Tampa Bay Lightning or the Avalanche pull off at the deadline to really push themselves over the hump to make the dance and not even just make the dance, but make the second, third, fourth round even and dominate the playoffs once again. To me, there's no real reason for middling teams that are in wildcard spots to be making trades like this, unless you're super confident that your team got off to the wrong foot and that you're already capable of making the second, third round. Don't make a trade like this. Don't trade away a Marco Rossi or somebody else like that for this. Don't trade away some of your top tier prospects because Judd Brackett over there has been doing a great job for this. Heck, if you wanted to trade Bo Horvat away for Judd Brackett, I'd kind of want that. I kind of like it. Okay, no, but all joking aside, Judd Brackett and the Minnesota Wild have been doing their thing, and I don't necessarily think now is the time for the Wild to be shedding away those prospects for rentals. As to what a potential trade could look like, I mean, if you're going to go out there and ask me to name Minnesota prospects that I like, hey, the list is kind of endless. Of course, Marco Rossi is there. Of course, Jesper Wallstead is there. I don't necessarily think they'd be willing to part with any of those, but I mean, we're talking about trading for the Canucks captain here, for crying out loud, so let me dream. If we go over to the rest of the Minnesota Wild and their draft history, I mean, there are a lot of good names. Liam Ugrin's a guy that I like a lot. Carson Lambos, Jack Peart, Murat Kusnadinov. There are many players that I really do like and that could benefit the Vancouver Canucks long term. But, of course, I don't necessarily think this trade is one that should be discussed in the first place, so... I guess this video was made for nothing? I don't know. No, it was talked about on sports radio. I think it's okay to talk about it. So either way, if you're a Minnesota Wild fan or a Vancouver Canucks fan, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about a Bo Horvat trade over to the Wild. It's kind of interesting talking about Canucks and Wild trade rumors that aren't revolving around Brock Besser nowadays, but Bo Horvat instead is put onto the spotlight. I will say one more thing before we end off this video. The entire score video, the video which is kind of why we're even making this commentary in the first place, it does bring up a Bleacher Report article talking about potential destinations for pending UFAs, and the Minnesota Wild are listed as a UFA, or not a UFA destination, a trade rental deadline destination for Bo Horvat, which is kind of why it was brought up onto their show in the first place. So I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go ahead and listen to the entire video podcast. It's 20 minutes long. It's Sports Talk Radio. So I think you're kind of familiar with that if you're on this video, I would assume. Because let's face it, the guys and gals and everything in between, the people that watch these videos, you're probably diehard sports fans already, and there's no reason to get through nine minutes of a LEGO Rocks 99 video if you're just a casual watcher of the Canucks who only tunes into a game once every two or three weeks. We kind of deal with the hardcore folks around here and I like to educate those that aren't necessarily there yet. So talk to the comments about your thoughts about Bo Horvat and the Wild. I hope you enjoyed this Vidishraj Rolls 99.
and bye.